driving force. But before we get into it, let's look at uh, some terminology. So when we speak about the electrical driving force, we're going to be speaking about charged particles or ions. And these can be one of two types of charges. So a cation is a charge, uh, a positive charge on a particle. And an ion is a particle with a negative charge. So we're going to be looking at positive and negative charged particles and how they exert a force on the membrane as well, in addition to the chemical force. We're also going to speak about the membrane potential. And it's represented by Vm. This is also a force. And this is caused by the unequal distribution of charged particles across the cell membrane. Now, in a similar way that a battery having separate charges creates a potential to do work or energy, having separate charges at, on either side of the membrane creates this membrane potential. It's really important to understand this, how we get this membrane potential. So if there were excess positive charges inside the cell and positive charges outside the cell, we would have no membrane potential. Likewise, if there were excess negative charge inside the cell and negative charge outside the cell, we would have no membrane potential. But because we have this really unique environment that's set up around our cells, where there's more negative charge inside the cell because of a higher presence of anions, and there's more positive charge outside the cell because of an of, uh, excess or abundance of cations, we have this energetic potential to do work, to pull those forces in the opposite direction. So that's the membrane potential. Now we're also gonna speak about the magnitude of the membrane potential. That's basically the strength of that force. So we can have a membrane potential that's weak, that's not really pulling those particles, and that's because of the, 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 the size of the charge and things like that, which we'll look at. Um, or we can have a really strong membrane potential, which is a large value, and so it really wants to pull those ions to the opposite side. So we'll talk about different magnitudes of the membrane potential. Also, when we speak about the membrane potential, we usually reference the inside of the cell, so the intracellular environment. And a good example is a resting cell. So a resting cell has a membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts. And that's another way of saying that at rest, a cell has more negative charge inside uh, than it does outside. Okay, so when we speak about membrane potential value, we're looking at the excess of charge on the inside of the cell. So this is a good um, illustration of that concept. So again, because we have excess anions, negatively charged particles outside, inside, and we have excess cations, positively charged particles outside, we have this potential here. We have a negative and a positive on either side of the membrane. So there's an energetic potential across this membrane. So if, for example, there was a positive uh, charged particle inside of the cell, it would really want to get, I'm sorry, if there were positively charged particles outside of the cell, they would really want to get inside of the cell where there's excess negative charge. And likewise, if you have negative particles inside the cell, there's this force that really wants to get them outside to their opposite charge. Okay, so this is a force or a potential to move these particles. So the principle of this electrical driving force is that opposite charges attract very much what we just saw and like charges repel. So those negatively charged particles are really gonna wanna get on the outside of the cell and those positively charged particles are gonna wanna get inside. Um, now we also wanna look at the polarity of the cell. So whether the cell is at rest or whether it's excited will determine if we have excess positive or negative charge inside the cell. And then we also want to take into account the charge on the particle in question. So what charge does that particle have, whether it's an anion or a cation? Okay. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Okay. So the second part of the equation here is the electrical driving force. And that depends on two factors, which we just mentioned. The charge on the particle in question. Okay. 
as well as the polarity of the cell. And for our purposes, that's really going to be a determinant of the state of the cell, whether it's positive or negative. And that's going to be whether it's at rest or whether it's excited. So we're going to compare this with two different states, a resting cell. And then later on, we're going to look at examples of excited cells. So we're going to use that as a reference here as well. An excited cell. Okay. So now we're going to describe some of these particles. So, or these are ions, rather. So we know sodium is one of our commonly, uh, our common positively charged ions, and it is in excess outside the cell. So that gives lots of positive charge outside the cell, created by sodium. and very little sodium inside. Uh, on the other hand, chloride is one of our negatively charged ions and it is in excess inside the cell. And there's very few chloride outside the cell. And so now we have a force that wants to pull chloride outside of the cell Remember, those opposite charges attract. So this negatively charged chloride really wants to get out of the cell. And the positively charged sodium really wants to get into the cell. Okay, it wants to get into this negative environment. So this is what we mean when we speak about the electrical driving force. Depending on the state of the cell, whether it's excess positive or negative inside, and depending on the charge of the particle in question, that creates a force to move across the membrane as well. Now, in an excited cell, we have the opposite scenario. So in an excited cell, we depolarize the membrane, and we basically flood lots of sodium inside, lots of positive charge inside, and that kind of overpowers the negative charge. And then we end up with a lot of negative charge outside. And very few positive charge. So that creates a electrical force in the opposite direction where sodium now wants to get outside. And chloride wants to get inside. Okay, so we can see here that based upon the charge as well as the state of the cell, we have a force to move these ions across the cell. So this is the second piece of the puzzle in terms of looking at the overall force acting on the membrane. 